kind of working on the boundary between management and culture. And this is what also my, my university is, is known for. Karlsruhe International University is a small university here in Karlsruhe and we are working a lot together with uh, ZCAM because we are interested in all these, yeah, in all these areas where management uh, is confronted with other logics, for example, the logic of ethics, the logic of sustainability, the logics of culture. So we are interested in how can an understanding of culture helps managers, but also how can managerial practices help cultural institutions. And um, so this is not so, the, what I would like to present is very much, how we call it in Germany, Werkstattbericht, so a work in progress. It's not so much um, yeah, the high theory, high academic, it's really just a, uh, uh, yeah, a case where I would like to show you how we can use marketing um, or yeah, managerial uh, techniques to, to get some more knowledge about segmentation in cultural institutions, especially in museums. So I think it's, it's quite complementary to what you said, because you, you really set the stage for this discussion. What is, uh, why should we care about segments? Why should we care about the audience? Why should we care about engagement? And I would like now to, to, to dig a little bit deeper. How, what could that be? Um, how could we get more knowledge about our audiences? Now, as I said, it's, it's really based on this ZKM case. We have two studies, um, one from last summer, one from the last two weeks. So I, when you wonder why I'm look, looking a little bit tired because I did the number crunching yesterday and I got the results at 9 or 10 o'clock. So this is it's very, very fresh uh, results, what you, what you get presented today. And I would like to start with some thoughts from a marketing perspective. Then I would like you to show these uh, results and also um, stress a little bit what's the digital perspective on segmentation in this case. Okay, so um, I'm not just teaching cultural uh, yeah, cu management in, in the media or in the cultural field, but also marketing. And from the marketing perspective, um, yeah, and w w when marketing is concerned, many people think that marketing is just about printing flyers, organizing PR things, or just the person you have to, to go when you, ha when you have a vision, then you just tell them, okay, can you set something, uh, set up th something graphically, or can you do something on Facebook so that people come? So, but marketing in general is much more. Now, when you look at what, what uh, famous um, academic thinkers um, um, wrote about marketing, then it's, um, for example, Peter Drucker, then, then sa they say marketing is so basic that it is not just enough to have a strong sales department or, and to entrust marketing to it. Marketing is not only much broader than selling, it is not a specialized activity at all. It encompasses the entire business. It is the whole business seen from the point of view of its final result, that is from the customer's point of view. Concern and responsibility for marketing must therefore permeate all areas of the enterprise. So the idea of marketing is that you see the company, but I would add any kind of organization from the customer's perspective. So, and now let's go to segmentation. Why is segmentation so important for marketing? When we think about marketing not as just design or campaigns, when it's about knowing who the customer is, then the first important, the, then the second important step is that we have to take into account that there is not the customer. There are lots of customers. There are so many customers that we have to think what kind of customer it, yeah, is, is how and how can we approach them. Are there different groups which are kind of similar or which are, which are different to other groups? And this is where segmentation starts. Segmentation doesn't mean segmentation of customer markets into homogeneous groups of customers, each of them reacting differently to marketing instruments. So that you need different instruments for each group. And there are lots of different ways how you can separate audiences or markets. Now, first of all, you can do a kind of demographic segmentation. You know, there are different age cohorts, there are different genders, so this is a demographic uh, segmentation. Then there's a geographic segmentation. And when a company uh, offers products to, to, to uh, 
German uh, stores, then of course they can offer them to uh, stores in northern Germany, to, uh, to stores in southern Germany. So you have a kind of geographical segmentation, and it might be that you have different that you have local differences or um, that you have national differences. You can have psychographic differences. Now that people have different mindsets, that they have different values, for example, different attitudes, or that their behavior is different. Now, for example, there are people going to a museum once a year, and there are people going to a museum once a month or once a week. So now there are patterns in their behavior where you can separate groups. So the, 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 you see there are lots of different criteria which you can use for segmentation. And the, the crucial issue is now, when you know that you have to segment your, your customers, your, your audience, um, which kind of criteria are relevant for you? And now, um, what, what uh, we did, or what Marie did uh, last summer is, she wrote a master thesis about segmentation in the, in the cultural field, and she investigated um, how many segmentation models are there, and there are a lot. Now, I think you found 33 different models, just ways how you can segment uh, uh, yeah, the audiences for cultural institutions. So, this lecture is not about the, the 34th uh, uh, approach to do so. No, it's it's more about the logic behind that and how can we learn from that. Now, you, you mentioned just, I would like just to, to mention two of them which you focus in your study, the the, uh, the Taluta segmentation about Lebensstil orientiertes Kulturmarketing, so marketing which focuses on, on lifestyles or the Mediennutzer uh, typology which is uh, set up by the public broadcasting agencies in Germany to, to uh, segment their uh, audiences. And now what's, uh, the, the interesting question is, when we know there are all these models, is there any model which we could use for, for this particular case? Now this would be a kind of what is called an a priori segmentation. You know that there are models which segment the, the audience in a way and then you just use one of these yeah, fixed models to apply to your audience. This is what many, yeah, many companies do, that is what many organizations do, because they just find these, these models quite convincing. I'm not sure how many of you know this kind of model. This is in Germany, it's very, uh, it's very popular. It's, of course, there's lots of research behind it, so it's a very good segmentation of, 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 of German society. It's about the, uh, it's, um, the, the, the company is called Zenos Institute. It's in Heidelberg, so just a few, uh, just a few kilometers from Karlsruhe. They segmented the, the German society into different lifestyles. Well, they developed um, two dim a two-dimensional space and then they, they segmented the German society in these 10 clusters, and they are often called potatoes just because it looks like, yeah, kind of stack of potatoes. And when you look at these potatoes, you, you can easily understand their, their, um, uh, their appeal. No? When you think about yourself, and then you look at these, at these titles, I think it's, it's easy for you to, to identify with at least one or two of these Terms. Now you are. I think many of you wouldn't tell, wouldn't call themselves the traditionals, but they're there. No, when you think about um, um, yeah, when you when you think about these titles, you might know you, you might have some impressions about your neighbors, your family, who might belong to which kind of lifestyle. If this is the way um, uh, companies like Zenos or other market research companies present these segmentations. They have nice slides for each uh, for each yeah for each cluster where they uh, where they just have some personas so they they have pictures of typical um, um, typical persons from this segment and they have images to show how they live and some some values which are important for them so there is a kind of intuitive approach okay yeah let's think of, think about these established segmentations and now let's think which kind of segment is relevant for our institution. Are, are there some segments coming to our institution? Are there some segments we would like to address? But when you, when you dig a little bit deeper, when you try to, to work with this kind of segmentation, you realize 
that it doesn't help you so much because um, is this segmentation really relevant for your institution? So, of course, it's, it's relevant for many markets, it's relevant for many companies. So, as I said, they really did a good job in doing so. Uh, there's much research behind it. But segments have to fit to a particular organization, to a particular exhibition, to a particular product. And do you really, can, do you really think that these segments are relevant for your um, um, audience because it's just a construction. Germany is not a field of potatoes. No? It's just a way of picturing uh, the German society. Now, there are lots of different ways you could imagine how to group the German society. This is just one way. It's very famous in the, in the, in the market research industry, but it's just one way. And it's based on two criteria, social status and basic values. Again, this is this is yeah. There is some some appeal in it now that social status, so how much money you have, but this could have an influence in how you how you if you are going to a museum or if you are listening to specific music or not, and also basic values might play a role. But when you look into the details, basic what they call basic values is just are you more traditional or are you more modern? For example, the, the question of is, are you interested in technology or in new music or new art? There is no differentiation in this segmentation. No? It's just modern versus traditional. So for some museums, it could be relevant to think about other criteria to segment their, 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 their audiences. Age, for example. No, age is not relevant for the segmentation. So. And the other one, the other very important argument is it's based on propri proprietary data. It's one of the tricky English words. So just Xenos knows how they calculate these segments. So of course, it's nice to work with them. But if you like to work with them, you have to approach this company. And then they can, can set up a study for you. So you do not know how to know if a particular customer, a particular person going to your museum is part of this segment or, or that, because the questions how they develop this kind of, yeah, this kind of segmentation, they are there, um, um, yeah, they are hidden, they, they, just the company who produces these studies knows how to, to work with that. So you cannot set up a survey and use these categories. No, so there is no way of addressing the segments. Even when you know, okay, I would like to, this um, liberal intellectual, this is my key target group. What shall you do? There is no way of, of addressing that because you do not know if the people going to a museum are really part of it unless you ask them to, to do a study. So what I, what I think what makes sense is to think about your own segmentation. And this is also what Marie did in her study. She tested many of these segmentations, but she also did a segmentation on her own. And this is really interesting, because then she could uh, think what is relevant for, for the ZKM. And she did a survey with one, more than 100 visitors in the last summer. And was, I think the, one of the results was very interesting, because she developed three clusters of interests. First, um, a lifestyle cluster, then a science and technology cluster, and then a culture cluster. And when you think about what you know about the ZKM, then this really fits to two different yeah. stories about the ZKM. This, the ZKM is, of course, is something related to culture, but it's also a museum about technology. And when you think about the exhibitions during the last years, of course, it reflects lifestyle is not just sunglasses and so it's also political discussions. So what's going on in the world? What is what's important for our personal life? So it's um, when you see that that you can really develop different storytellings for these three different segments. You know, people who are interested in these exhibitions because they tell us something about our life should be addressed in a different way than people who are just interested in in art, in, in new media art, or 
people who are interested in the impact of new technology. So when you know that, then you can try to link that to different segments, then you can try to link that, for example, to different channels and know, okay, when we would like to address people who are interested in science and technology, we have to use this kind of image, this kind of posting, for example. So, and when you remember all these potatoes, there was no mentioning of, of these three types. So this is really what you just get when you use your, your own data, when you analyze your own data with an analysis. So this was the first study uh, Marie did last summer, and the, the next study, um, based on some, um, yeah, some considerations of digital changes. So what is, what is new when it comes to digitalization um, for segmentation? First of all, you have more data available. So there are lots of new sources. Now that you have, when, when you can book tickets online, then it's possible to get uh, data about this booking platform, um, then you, you might have a kind of yeah a, a kind of subscription or a customer card. Then you can get data uh, about that. And you can also theoretically you can all you can also um, um, organize individual customer data with cus uh, customer relationship management software. So there are lots of technical opportunities to handle um, this kind of data. And then there are kind of digital lifestyles. So people um, organize their their, uh, culture, their, their their cultural lifestyle in a different way. No, they, they use mobile phones, for example, for booking, for taking pictures. No, they, their customer journey, so their way, their way to a ticket or to, to the exhibition is different. No, they inform themselves about uh, in, in different channels. They, they uh, buy tickets in different channels. And also new cultural offerings are there. Of course, YouTube is a, is a competitor to, to, to museums now. But also, not just that the customers, the consumers change, that they have new lifestyles, but also museums have new ways of addressing them. No, they can use ho the, home, the homepage, newsletters, social media. There are lots of different channels. And of course, it's not just important to know much about the, these new digital lifestyles, it's also important for you to know how you can address these people with these new channels. And the, 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 the last thing is what, what you also mentioned in your, your lecture, this, this kind of change in the mindset. Now that segments is always about groups, about very fixed group that we think women are like this, men are like this, older people are like that, younger people are like that. And when it comes to, when I talk to people um, from, from, um, yeah, from um, um, big data companies and I, I use the term segmentation, they always um, laugh because they say, yeah, you marketing guys over this, with this kind of segmentation, this is so old fashioned. What they mean is that we shouldn't think in these kind of groups because the groups always are a kind, uh, are something which, um, which, uh, where, you, where you lose complexity, no? it's the individual which counts. So of course, sometimes you have to decide what, what, what you cannot treat any individual uh, individually. But the approach you have when you, when you have lots of data, when you, have, when you really know how to handle data, then you can think about how in this situation would this individual probable part of this group or that group. And this is and this is not a stable thing. It's not, this is your lifestyle, but when there's this exhibition with this yeah, attributes, when there are these campaigns, could we, uh, do you think that this individual would rather be attracted to the exhibition because of this kind of advertising campaign or not? So it's, it's more about the particular situation where you calculate stuff and not about fixed groups which are there for, for uh, many years. So we tried to, to address some of these uh, things in our second study. No, we, we, uh, again, we took this individual perspective and said, no, we, we do not want a, a priori model in the beginning so that we, we, with prefix categories. No, we would like to find some segments, but um, we would also like to find some micro segments. For specific situations, you might need more detailed information about very small segments. 
So um, I, I calculate several different segmentation approaches for different situations. And also we integrated data about digital lifestyles, so which kind of social media do they use? And also what this, uh, this is also mirrored in their digital approachability. So when you know they are on Facebook, then you know, okay, we can address them via Facebook. And the, the next um, addition is that we didn't focus just on the ZKM visitors, but we also asked people who visited other museums and people we just met in the city. So it's not just segmenting the audience of ZKM, it's segmenting the audience of Karlsruhe, so a kind of cultural audience. And this is interesting because then we can also think about how to address people not going to the ZKM. What we did not is using real digital customer data. This is one of the latest steps, which is also interesting. As I said, we have now lots of different uh, new data sources available. We didn't, uh, we didn't uh, cover this in our study because this would be much more complex to think about real customers. So some digital uh, experts would say it's still old fashioned, but at least we, we covered all these other digital aspects. And uh, one of the results is that we got, um, yeah, that we got three, uh, six different segments for the, se uh, so for, for um, uh, Karlsruhe. And now we can link these segments to their, to their visiting behavior, for example, and to their, um, yeah, to, to their um, usage of, of social media and to think about what kind of segment can we address with what kind of channel. Again, it's just, um, it's very preliminary. We did, the, the, the calculations are very, uh, yeah, are very new, so there, we need lots of checks. So it's really just a first insight and it's just an example what you can do with this kind of data. It's not that this kind of logic or this segmentation is important for other uh, museums. It's just an example to show what we did. So the first one is um, very young people. It's, um, you see that now the, the average uh, is 22 years and they, they are using Facebook but they are also using Instagram and this is very unique. All the other five uh, classes do not use Instagram so this is our uh, is the segment we can address via Instagram and it's they also um, they have also affinity to to this fest which is a, a musical event here in Karlsruhe and they have an interest in job and education and they have an interest in holidays so this is these are the, their main interests they are not so much interested in in arts or in, in in politics but when you want to address them then you have to then you should think about links to these kind of topics then there are people uh, which are 30 plus and you see here it's, it's really interesting here you see these kind of differences between the age cohorts they are also on Facebook some also on Twitter but there is not so much Instagram usage no this is really which is uh, important when you think about targeting different social media channels then you see that there are really different age cohorts for each uh, social media channel now there is also an interest in music but also an affinity to theaters for example and what's interested, all of them in our study know the ZKM. So at least um, we have the, the awareness is really, uh, is really great for this kind of cluster. Then there was one cluster I didn't get so much information about. Uh, for, for all types of interest, they were on average level. The, um, the, yeah, the only thing which is interested for them, they had a high reliance on, on email newsletters. But more interesting cl uh, um, clusters are this page, for example, the fans, there are, there's a high amount of frequent visitors in this group. They're, they are medium age, around 40, but they have a high interest in sports, holidays and jobs. Low interest in other museums, so this was quite interesting. So the people who are very interested in the ZKM are different from, from people who like visiting other museums in Karlsruhe. So they, it might be that there is not this museum segment, but that they are too different groups of typical mu museum goers in Karlsruhe. And the channels uh, you can address them are uh, advertising, but also Facebook and, and email newsletters are also, um, would also work. Then you have two older groups. The, I called very old and the rather old group. So then in this group, there's a high interest in science, politics, literature, but there's also a high amount of people who do not know the ZKM. So it's, it's interesting that they, that um, that for this you should 
yeah, you, you should you could imagine that you th could think how how could you raise the awareness of ZKM for this kind of segment, and then this last uh, uh, segment I call the high potential. They also yeah they are also above uh, uh, sixty. Um, but there is a high, very high amount of people who can imagine to visit the ZKM. So they have never been here, but ask if they would like to go. They, they, they are, there is a very high, uh, you know, the, the group is very uh, high. And so, and they are mainly influenced by media coverage. So just as an example, as I said, I have to check that uh, sometimes. But when you have this kind of result, then you know, okay, um, media cover coverage could trigger um, the, the, um, the visitor numbers because people who, who have, might have this affinity, who thought about going here when they, when they listen to a, a radio report or when they just see something in the, the, the local television, then, they, then it might help to, to trigger this segment to go here. You see, we get very really detailed information about different segments, how can we address which kind of, uh, which kind of group. And even when you have more detailed questions, for example, this question: Can we just uh, when we when we think when we have to organize our Facebook <coughs> um, uh, our Facebook offerings, what shall we do? We would like to to convert people who are interested in that Zetka into visitors. When we now have this m very small group of people who have an interest in the ZK without having visited it and who are also available via Facebook. When, then you can just look at this particular segment and check which kind of interest they have. In this case it's um, yeah, health, family and um, other countries like holidays for example. So then you know, okay, we should think in our storytelling about these topics because this might attract this particular sub-segment. Or when you just think about people not knowing the ZKM, and then PR and advertising are the best channels to, um, uh, to, to, to reach them. And the topic of technology would be the, 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 the topic which is most interesting for this particular subgroup. You see, when you have all this data, then you can do all these micro-analytical, yeah, all these micro uh, segmentation and uh, analysis on your own, and then you can do that again and again when you have a new question, then you can use your data for, for answering the new question. So there are three different outlooks I would like to have, three th C's where it's a thing which is important for a cultural institutions. The first one is care, so just the, the importance of caring about data in two ways. Think about what data do we still have, how can we use that, is there, is, are there easy ways of getting more and interesting data? But of course also to think about the legal aspects. No? Uh, is it how, is, how can we use that? Is it possible to use um, um, data which is, um, which is anonymous or is it, is it possible to use uh, uh, data which is linked to personal data? Yes, so this is the first challenge, I would say. But the second one is competence or skills. Now you need also the skills in-house so th that you can do all these analysis. So th th because when you just think, okay, five years, uh, all five years, we would like to go to an agency uh, asking for a new analysis, you, then you will get a snapshot, a snapshot for this particular moment, and you won't get the information you are interested in. So it's important that cultural institutions think about. Um, having this kind of skills in their house, or that that study programs um, try to implement that in their uh, in their uh, in their curriculum. And the, the last one, collaboration, is also very important. As I said, the second study was uh, also about um, asking people in the city. When we just ask our audiences, then we won't get any information about people not going to to the to uh, the museums. So we have to collaborate with others. We have to share data with them. We have to, for example, do a collaborate when we have a kind of customer card, then several institutions can work together and also analyze the data in, in a collaborative way uh, so that all of them can have targeted uh, offers for, for, for the individual segments. Okay, thank you very much.